up and welcome to an urban garden tour May 2022. I am so excited to share with you guys the first tour ever of my urban homestead in the making in the making okay we are not self-sufficient on any means but man is it worth trying and there's nothing more fulfilling than being fed from your property or your rental any place you live you can grow so let me just show you my garden so that you can get a few ideas let's go a mixture of food forest in the ground raised bed and other stuff so let me show you the new beds that i'm making this year okay i must admit i do not have a perfect garden by any means you know why i'll tell you where you can find a perfect garden nowhere even god's garden had the dang snake in it but <laughs> so anything that any garden don't feel like you're comparing anybody to anybody else's because we're all gardening and that's what we're supposed to do, okay? So this is my food forest. It is what the first thing I did when I started this garden. I ordered a bunch of trucks. I ordered a bunch of trucks. I ordered two truckloads of wood chips and that was about three years ago and it's already turned into amazing soil. I, this is a food forest and it is too overwhelming to weed. So like you will always see the Bermuda in here. One thing that I wish I had done be sure to subscribe because there's going to be five points to the video of things I wish I had done, but I'll give you a sneak peek, is make a border that is very, very strong. So I'm just going to lay out cardboard and put logs on top of it, where before I had just put logs and I had put a big fence. We took down the fence and the fence is now over there with the chickens, um, but I thought that would be enough. And nope, nope, nope. So even though the technique of, you know, lasagna mulching works, I laid down cardboard and I laid down the wood chips. The dang Bermuda got in from the from the border. So if you have a food forest and you're hoping like I'll never have to weed again, which is like I love that idea. I love that idea. I don't know if it's true. Um, lay down a strong border. Okay, so that would be my first mistake or something else. But anyways, this is my food forest and I absolutely love it. This is my strawberry and asparagus patch. The asparagus grows in spears that when the season is over will turn into these like really pretty little ferns and the strawberries grow underneath it. It's a really good system. I like those together. I got fruit trees, apples and pears that do well in my area. And then I also just put berry bushes in like crazy. This is about three year old um, patch. And so we've started seeing the shoots. Um, I'm going to get a lot of potting soil. Look at the beautiful butterfly who came to say hi in this video. Um, it's actually flying around right what I wanted to point at. Those shoots are new blackberry shoots. The blackberries are brambles and so they will like turn over and then they'll sit in and that that thing that sit in that one part will turn into a new one and so i've got brambles starting all over the place this is why they are considered invasive i don't consider that a problem myself because what i'm going to do is i'm going to dig these up on my hand new to new friends because blackberries and raspberries are just way too expensive at the store it doesn't make sense when they are that invasive obviously we want biodiversity in america um, for food that is biodiversity always makes a better sustainable system however i am going to hand these off to other neighbors so that they can have it growing in their yard because like i said blackberries raspberries too expensive at the store it doesn't make sense when the plant is this easy to grow at the base of every uh, fruit tree that I have not gotten fruit off of them yet this is about four years ago that one is the oldest one I bought like a two-year-old tree and that has done blooms this year so I'm excited to see what happens but every fruit tree hasn't fruited yet this might be the year for it has a comfrey plant too comfrey is a plant that you don't eat necessarily but it is such a beneficial plant anyways it's got a huge tap root that goes down way below most plants can and it pulls up nutrients from that and so this is may and uh, i live in zone six so like this plant from the last frost or whatever has been able to do this much already and what i do with it is i just chop it down i let the flowers happen the flowers are beginning on that one they've already started on that one because the pollinators love it so i'm going to let them flower and then when they start looking ugly chop it down and that all that plant mass matter is going to go on the ground as a living mulch and so all the nutrients that that plant comfrey drew from down deep i'm able to now use on the surface for my plants these are not fancy at all and like i said with the other thing i'm going to have an issue with the border so i might go pick up um extra like cardboard from our local recycling center so that oh look the dog is walking in it that's okay uh, so that I can mark these borders it won't look pretty at all but I'm not going for pretty I'm going for well fed this year and so this whole bed is looking kind of dry I watered it this morning I put seedlings and I put seedlings of um 
sunflowers i put seedling or like seeds of not seedlings put you obviously don't see the seedlings anything that you see is a weed right now because i'm still waiting on them but last year we had our sunflower and cosmos here and look who's popping back up good morning sunflower good morning sunflower i i love i love having those random surprises and so this bed is full of sunflowers and um what else I can't even remember. Hold on. This bed is full of things like sunflowers and zucchini and squash and what is the thing? Okra. There we go. That's the word I was looking for, for this whole time. So that's what this bed is. This isn't a very fancy bed. We literally just have one of those hand tillers and we did this. Do I like this system as much as I like laying cardboard and mulch? Absolutely not. But that is best done in the fall. If you can do it now, do it now. It works. It really does. You're just going to have to cut through the cardboard a hole to put your um, seedlings in. But for this, I had to just use seeds and so we just tore up the soil a little bit the soil isn't the best but at the same time i can't afford a bunch of stuff and i'm gonna see this works this works i didn't do anything last year for those sunflowers they did great all along the fence line i did more sunflowers rachel why so many sunflowers number one they're beautiful <laughs> number two they're native in america number three um they're ukraine's national flower and we support them you know what i mean and i got chickens that i would need to feed and so i'm trying to feed them for cheaper so slowly i did sunflowers all along the fence line because i think that'll look gorgeous and then um, I started digging up the soil more so that my cosmos seeds could go down. What are cosmos? They're the most beautiful flower I've ever seen. And the more flowers you pick, the more flowers it makes. So like you encourage your kids to pick them. And pollinators just love it. And I want a lot of pollinators here. Ah, the dog. Come on. <laughs> so come on, I'll show you some more. Um, we live on a third of an acre in the city and I absolutely love it. The goal would be, you know, a million acres out in the woods, but that isn't us for right now. And that's okay. You can garden, like I said, anywhere. This is a cherry tree that does well. Always look up what does well in your area. That way you're not getting super frustrated by trying to grow a peach tree up north. You know what I mean? This is bee balm, which is another native plant. I absolutely love native plants. I try to combine native plants and edible plants because that's just going to do the best. I'm not a very good gardener, to be honest, truth be told. Um, but I am able to do well because I just foolproof plants is what I want. These are grapes that I pruned way too hard, but we'll see what happens because they go up this thing and I don't think it's big enough, but I got grapes on both sides. Back here, I have a dead hedge. So all of the things that I coppice, um, all the like, you know, like that thing, that maple tree, for instance, I have to like, I need to just poison it. I don't know how to get rid of that other than dig it out. It's too much work. But anyways, when it gets too big, I just coppice it, take off all the things and I put them there. And so the birds like to fly in there and nest in the winter because not nest, like they're not making babies, but it's a safe place for them when all the trees are gone. Also back here, I just do wildflowers because I don't want to mow this. <laughs> and it's also uh, where I like store supplies. It's a supplies place. We actually don't look back there. <laughs> I can't believe I showed that to you on camera. Um, like I said, another grape. And then these are sunchokes. I love sunchokes. I love how easy to grow and they are beautiful plants, but oh my goodness, they are invasive. I don't, I didn't even plant one here, but I saw it here and I was like, you know what? I do want food, so I'm not going to get mad about it. I'm going to feed it to the chickens. But if you have even just one little thing like this, it's going to turn into a big thing because I think that like we just dropped one over here and then it took hold and oh my goodness, it's already doing that just a few months in. Here's another one of those like little not very fancy beds just tore up the soil and I put down some seedlings. So I have my garlic growing here. You can't see Then I got some pepper plants and then I did a couple more sunflowers. These are our raised beds that we built out of um, our old garage door. I absolutely love repurposing stuff. And like when the garage door came off, I was like, oh, that's a raised bed right there. In fact, it's two. And so I actually put my compost system in the raised bed because what I did with the raised bed is I took a bunch of logs. You saw some logs over there. Our neighbors lost a tree. Oh, I sleep out here sometimes when the weather's real nice. You should try it. It's amazing. Sleeping with the birds. Anyways, <laughs> and the trampoline super comfortable. Um, so we took all that da downed tree, all the logs, and we put them in here so that I didn't have to pay for this much potting soil. Over time, it's broken down. We built these at the beginning of last year, and so we've done one year in them with all the logs. And so I put my compost system right in there so that the nutrients as the water from like rain and just watering, it'll leak out into the logs and continue to break those down. And it has, this was a lot taller and it's already sunk in that much. So this is where I have all of the things that, um, like my tomato plants, I'm going to, as they grow up tall, attach to those poles because I never do well with tomato plants in the like cages. I don't know. And I can't, and I'm not, I'm not crafty enough yet. 
yet to make something, um, an apparatus like you see other people doing where they like tie it up to a pole and stuff. This is another bed that I made and I got cucumbers on the backside. This is just chicken wire. I'm hoping that'll hold it up, but we'll see. All of it's experiments. Gardening is just a thousand experiments and you're only a failed gardener when you start, stop playing and stop, stop experimenting because that's what it takes that's what it all is and then i got some garlic some chamomile don't know if they do together you know the whole companion planting i didn't look that one up um and then we got some cucumbers in the back this is my chicken paddock we used to have them free ranging and that's why i had the fence around um the food for us but now they're just in their own paddock oh my goodness you have so many things in there i know i do it's for interest uh, i do feel bad that they live in clutter but at the same time every once in a while i'll turn these things over all of them and underneath is bugs that like free protein for the chickens it works out really well in the back here i got some hazelnut trees they're already a pretty old so the chickens haven't scratched like they haven't been harmed by them at all they're not fruiting yet i don't have i haven't gotten nuts yet i'm um, not sure when but i'm excited for that and then we had some raspberries and a service berry oh i have never had a service berry super looking forward to trying it so this is my garden is it fancy no does it have to be no all it's doing is feeding you. If you got cardboard on the ground because you can't do the Pinterest perfect thing like me, go for it, girl. Gardens are yours. If they look silly, they look silly. If they look beautiful, they look beautiful. But I guarantee you even those perfect gardens you see on the internet have a weedy side to them too that they don't show. I promise. I promise you saw mine. <laughs> for real. I'm so excited to do Victory Gardening with you this year and for every year after. It's going to be awesome. I love you. We got this. Let's go.